Yum yum. Hello, this is Pascal. Here's a nice little stitch map trick that actually can give you some ideas to use uh, in other circumstances. Sometimes you may want to add stitches to an object that wasn't really prepared for that. I'm going to use as an example this cap from the presets. So as you can see, it's a bit messy, would be a little difficult to line up the curves properly on those edges. And I know because I looked at it that the soft part was made, I suspect, in a marvelous designer. And the bottom was made in modo probably so that means that uh, it has some pretty neatly laid out uvs for the panels and i'm going to use that so i went ahead and uh, prepared all that so i separated all the panels and i prepared uvs for the for the rim and you have to make sure you have pretty clean UVs, so very little distortion. Those, there's nothing you can do about it. It's so dense that you can't really manage that, but it looks pretty good here and everywhere. So I, I'm using a PBR texture, a fabric texture here. So to go back to the stitches, I want to add stitches on those uh, sides here and I don't want to do it on the mesh because it's a mess. So what I'm going to do is select my UV map here, go to texture, convert UVs to mesh. I'm going to call it flat and here we go. So now I can hide this original mesh right now. I'm going to work on this one. This is what you would do when you use a UV transfer, which is a great uh, tool also. But in this case, I have now two meshes that have the exact same UV map, but this one is completely flat, so I'm going to use it to light down my curves. So now you have two options. You can go into a font view. Let me get rid of this one. You can Create a new mesh. I'll start with this one, and then you can create your meshes, your curves inside Modo, or, which is what I did in this case, export your UVs to uh, EPS or SVG, and then work on it in uh, Illustrator. So that's what I did. So in uh, Illustrator. I did all my curves here on the following the size of the panels. Exported it back to Modo using uh, Save as Illustrator 8. And then re-imported it. So this is what I did. I have all the curves imported back from uh, Illustrator here. And I also want to add the ones on the rim. Just double click on those edges. And just to curve, create new mesh. And as we can see, they're not perfectly correct. So I'll just Okay, so now I just cut them and put them in the, with the other ones. And delete this mesh I don't need anymore. And on to the fun part. So first I'm gonna give the flat mesh the same material as the original. Then I'm going to go to Render Layout. Go get my Stitch Map Kit. I'm going to choose the single. Make sure my target mesh is selected. Stitch it. It's 
select the curves and put that group above the original material and I have all my base stitching here now I've had some uh, issues uh, sometimes that they don't all show up and the way I fixed it by was by going into the curve particle generator here and changing the particle ID mode to span from a Spanish curve to a random and that fixed it in this case it worked so I'm happy so I'll change the size of the stitch five millimeter and also the distance to five millimeter and see so it some of them are not showing anymore so I'll go back switch to random and it all comes back it's a weird bug so now I'm done with the setup all I have to do is select my mesh here make sure the the UV map is selected and I'm going to start with the diffuse so big to file I already baked this so I'll replace it choose diffuse I choose a 4k map and make it goes pretty fast Okay, so that's done. And then select the one of the normals. Remember, it's going to bake everything that's visible here. Big to file is normal. Four K. I'm also going to bake the roughness because why not? So big to file, roughness, okay so now I can go back to my, I'll hide this one and the curves, go back to my original mesh here, And I can hide this group and turn off all those textures. My images have been uh, imported inside the clip browser, so I can just drag them inside the material group. So this is roughness, this is normal. And all my stitches are here. And my textures are all ready so so now you have all your textures ready to animate render whatever one more thing you can do is that let me go back to my flat mesh here and turn this back on and hide these go back to my original texture maps what I can do, if I want to control the color of the stitch in my baked textures, I can use the group mask texture from the stitching here. So I'll use a create instance, not duplicate, create instance, and put it above here and change the 
the output to diffuse color and in the cap material here I'm going to add a constant diffuse color which is going to be black so my uh, mesh is all black with uh, white stitches and now I can same thing make sure everything is properly selected and I can bake that as a mask texture. So mask, same thing, OK. And it's all black because I had this texture selected, so it baked everything under. So I have to make sure to select the top texture here and bake to file. Okay, so let's go back to our original mesh. Hide this for good, I hope. Hide all these. And this one we can keep around for now, turn it off. So only these three textures. And this uh, constant is going to be my stitch color so I'll give it an obvious different color and in my images I use my mask put it under my constant and change the output to shader control layer mask and then uh, when I render my cap I have different colors for the stitch. So that technique of using UVs to mesh is a great trick to apply uh, textures when you have a tricky geometry. It does require clean UVs, but isn't it good to have clean UVs? I ask. Okay, bye. Yum, yum.